Yvonne Mongo is an economist for Sub-Saharan Africa at Renaissance Capital in Johannesburg. Yvonne, please, if you will, update us on the situation with the strikes in Nigeria. Do you see these spreading, spreading perhaps to the oil industry? Um, in terms of the impact on the oil industry, at this point we don't think they'll be significant. One of the big positives is that in Nigeria most of the production of course happens offshore and from the reports we've heard from the executives of the oil industry, they don't expect a significant impact. However, we should still keep in mind that the unions have called for the oil workers to participate. But over the past three days, there's nothing as yet to indicate that the strike action will significantly impact the oil industry. So the strikes were triggered by the government getting rid of its fuel subsidies, but the people mm. say that they are Correct. protesting against corruption. They don't trust that their government's going to take that money and use it to improve their lives, correct? Correct. That's the big problem. In terms of the macroeconomic outlook, it's a big positive that the strike, sorry, that the fuel subsidies have been scrapped. The fuel subsidies made up about a quarter of oil revenue, and there was, it, it created huge scope for corruption. Now, what the government is saying that is that they'll take those funds and redeploy them in other uh, expenditures, more effective expenditures, particularly infrastructure, which in itself sounds notable. But a history of graft implies that the electorate or the Nigerian people do not trust that the uh, funds from um, uh, which were previously used for the subsidy will be effectively and transparently used elsewhere. What do other voices say about whether President Goodluck Jonathan's government can be trusted to spend this money in the social and infrastructure areas that it's promising? Okay, firstly, in terms of the reforms that the, uh, the Jonathan administration promised, this is the first of them. The uh, subsequent, or the other ones, were the power reform and the petroleum industry bill. So it was a big positive that they started off the year by scrapping the fuel, the expensive fuel subsidy, which I've mentioned was highly vulnerable to graft. So that's a big positive. In terms of the, the ability for this administration to reduce in the graft, well, they've got notable appointments, as you all know, the Minister of Finance in place, uh, the Minister of Agriculture is uh, highly regarded. The former Minister of uh, Finance has moved into trade and industry. So you've got a very strong, highly respected team that's in place that is singing strongly about reducing graft. So if there's an administration that could make some sort of change in terms of the anti-corruption drive, it's, it's this one. But they still one. need to prove to the electorate that they can do so. Certainly, judging by the people on the streets. Uh, what's the knock-on effect going to be of the cut in fuel subsidies? What's the impact going to be? You say, for example, we could see food prices jump by up to 70 percent. Yes. Yes, we're already hearing anecdotal evidence of food prices increase by 60 to 70 percent. We think that's overdone to some extent. We think we'll see that reverse. However, we are going to see higher uh, prices across the board, uh, particularly uh, because of the higher transport costs. Keep in mind, um, suppliers in Nigeria uh, have the advantage of price setting, so you're already seeing quite a few prices go up. Our biggest concern is food, as well as housing and utility costs, because those together make up about 60 to 70 percent of the consumer price index. So we're definitely expecting a pickup in inflation, which could imply tighter monetary policy this year. So perhaps consumers, maybe not so much suppliers, that are more vulnerable to the change. Uh, I wonder uh, what the impact's going to be on growth overall of the fuel, of the reduction in fuel subsidies, say for 2012. Okay, we expect the impact to be rather small. The main reason is because the industrial sector, of course, which would, would be the biggest consumer of fuel as well as power. Keep in mind a lot of electricity uh, that's generated in Nigeria comes through generators. These are either diesel or um, petrol powered. So the industrial sector in itself makes up around 10% uh, and 15% of um, GDP. That's excluding the oil and gas sector. And as such, we don't expect the impact to be that significant. Keep in mind agriculture, which is still very um, unmechanized, makes up 40% of GDP. So as a result, we're expecting growth of around 65 to 7%. Uh, and this is uh, compared to our initial forecast of 7% this year. Right, okay. Yvonne Mongo, the Sub-Saharan Africa economist from Renaissance Capital, telling us that the Nigerian government's cut in fuel subsidies could actually lead to less corruption in that country. Thanks so much.